Okay. Okay. So these, you know, we, we've covered a lot of this, but, you know, a lot of you talked about digitizing uh, your logs, or in some cases you did, did have LAS files. <clears throat> of course, you know, once you get them in the workstation, you're going to be able to, to correlate those digital logs. You're going to be displaying different parameters. In this case, this is actually a resource play where we're actually showing barrels of oil per acre foot. You're going to hear a lot more about barrels of oil per acre foot when you get to volumetrics. That might wake the engineers up, actually. They'll, they might listen up for that. But let's come back to this. So yeah, the, the header, like we said, these headers, these little images that you know you guys sometimes think like, oh, if it's not digital, it doesn't exist, right? Well, it does exist and it has tremendous information. You get stuff on here that you will not often get in an LAS file. So there it is. See, type of fluid in whole in this particular case. Now this is Pecos County, Texas, but salt. And it tells you the weight of the mud and uh, how much fluid they were losing, for example. The temperature, you know, those of you trying to understand source rock maturity, this is telling you something about the temperature gradient, etc. So the main point is don't ignore those PDF images we sent you. The header is a wealth of information and the logs themselves. And just a quick reminder, before the world had Petrel and, and Decision Space and Landmark, they used to use those paper logs. They got things and... Uh, I think you know about this in Egypt, right? This is papyrus, right? So paper. So they would get colored pencils and they would draw on them. And that's how they would correlate the logs. They would write the numbers down. They would post those on a base map. So look at your logs in the PDF images. There's a lot of information in there. Um, now, raster images can be loaded in workstations. And so that's something to keep in mind. So this is a case, it's actually a project I worked on myself. And uh, these are the raster images loaded in the workstation. That's tied in with some structural maps that were prepared, in this case, uh, PERFs. The, the little purple dots here representing PERFs. And so this was using the raster images. Um, and then we had a prospect that was up dipped from some PERFs, like we just talked about a few minutes ago. Now, that was just looking at it with the uh, without the seismic, but actually we had seismic in here. So we're back to ultimately you have to do the integration, but with a, a bit of work, you can usually get these raster images in the workstation and use them. Now, one of the most beautiful things that isn't always kept are mud logs or lithology logs. And uh, those two can be put into workstations. I mean, this is what was actually drilled. There's the sandstone that was drilled, the, limestone, etc. And so this picture, even though it looks uh, like it, it might just be paper, this is actually in the workstation. Every vertical red line is a well in the workstation. I could have turned on the actual digital LAS, but I purposely turned on the lithology logs to help guide the interpretation. These are some of the logs. Uh, again, it's a, it's a mixture. There's a raster in the middle, a conventional one. On the other, the, these pretty logs have all to do with special measurements to detect uh, how much TOC there might be in the formation and other uh, properties that have to do with resource plays. And then you can overlay those with your seismic. So integration of raster data with seismic is something that can be done. Um, ultimately, you may want to tie in things like, again, this is sort of think of it as Barrels of oil per acre foot is the purple. That's the richness of the rock. And now we can see what has been perforated. So that's the other thing. At some point, if you get some prospects, you'll want to know where the perforated interval was in your well specifically, or wells close to your prospect. I bring this up. This is production data. And um, now for you guys, you ideally would need subscriptions to be able to have all the production data from the Gulf of Mexico. It is there at BOEM, but it's a lot of work. But again, your engineers should be thinking about production performance in different parts of the Gulf of Mexico uh, with different bugs. So is Trim A generally a better producer than Tex W? These are the questions your engineer should be asking right now. If they can find papers where people have posted some of this, information, that would be good. In this case, uh, this is not even a workstation. This is just, uh, it's, a, it's actually a, a tool like Spotfire. It's actually called Tableau. 
Size of the bubble is tied to the cum production. The color has to do with overall gas versus oil split. So if you're in the Southwest here, that's a lot of gas production. If you're in these areas, oil production, and there's some intermediate areas where the colors are gray. Again, this is what your engineer should be thinking about. They shouldn't be on vacation right now. Uh, and, and for example, this would be one formation, this would be a different formation. And so where the rich areas are varies from formation to formation. The gas oil ratio or how much oil or gas you will produce will vary. And remember, you guys are going to be addressing carbon capture at the end. So it's going to make a big difference whether you're ultimately going to find gas investment opportunities or oil. So don't, again, this is up the engineer's alley. Uh, now, I just put this in example. Remember, ultimately, you are going to run economics on this. This is just a simple Excel spreadsheet. Again, your engineer is probably waiting till you've set up the Eclipse project for them, till you've got your little uh, model, but there's plenty the engineer can do. And this is, for example, some data in Excel that shows you how much oil and gas are being produced here and how much money. We're back to what Mr. King was talking about. We're ultimately here to make money. And uh, you can get data like this in certain cases or, or use some of the production data and estimate some of these values. In this case, we're looking at how much cash was being generated here over a period of time. The engineers often focus on the initial potential of the wells, how much will the well produce at the beginning, and then they'll track the decline. That's how you know how much money you're going to make. So I'm going to go to database here. This is a company that uh, works with us with Evolve, and they have different data sets here in the US, well data sets. Now, of course, when you're in oil companies, they pay for these subscriptions. So things like this, first of all, this is where I can come and find where all the rigs are active. So for example, those of you working in the Gulf of Mexico, you can see they're, they're your nearest rigs. A lot of drilling here going on to the south of San Antonio, a few wells getting close to uh, Matagorda Island, almost nothing going, well, actually that's different over there. And then of course, a lot of work in the Permian Basin. But what I wanted to show you here is related to the last point I made. So that particular field I was showing you is in Texas. So let's start with Texas. And by the way, those of you who wonder how much drilling has been done in Texas, there's what, 1.28 million wells that have produced onshore Texas. So we'll just uh, have a quick look at those. If, there you go. There's all the wells that have produced onshore Texas. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and the field we were talking about, you may remember I told you is called Stratton Field. Here's our Stratton Field, apply. And we're gonna zoom in on it. So this is now the area of the 3D. Now remember that I told you that that 3D has been sanitized, so they've rotated it, so it does not match the real trend of the, the geology here. But here is the real data from the field we talked about. And so I just wanted to tell you that 3D is a little subset of 3D. And that uh, 3D was one mile by one mile. So when you guys, some, some of you come over here and you get hired to come work for Exxon to work the Stratton field, you're not going to have to integrate 20 wells. You're going to have a 3D that of course will be quite a bit bigger than that little sample. But your integration job will now be 2,461 wells. And so, if you thought integrating 20 wells with formation tops and uh, logs of different vintages and different quality and production data and so on, if, if you thought that was tough for 20 wells, well, think of what you're gonna have ahead of you when you uh, start working on these. Let's come in here. We'll pick a well. So in this case, here we go. We find out how much this well has had in terms of cumulative production. This is the number 14 well. It tells you the reservoir pressure. Uh, let's go look at the card on this well. 
And so remember, I was showing you in the workstation that you've got all these other pieces of information. So there it is. This well is total uh, 6,600 feet. It tells you the elevation. Uh, this is basically, it's a vertical well. Let's see if there's any logs reported in here. No logs particularly. Let's see the completion. So there's the completion date. Look at this well. It was They're producing from 1,550 feet. That's incredibly shallow. This uh, obviously was drilled in 1963. And then ultimately, here is the production profile of this well. And this is a, obviously this is a very kind of a simple one, but some of these wells they will produce, they will then have a decline, they will recomplete, they'll have a new phase of production. So in this particular well, looks like it's produced about, this is your monthly productions here, by the way, you see it tells you there was your, your peak gas production. So again, the, the point here is I'm just trying to get you mostly to have a sense of the scale of the undertaking once you do a multidisciplinary study on a real producing field. So this Stratton case is complex enough, but uh, the, the little example we did with one square mile, but the job that would be on this one is far larger. So that's my story.